Good day, fellow investors. Today I want to share with you my two latest financial mistakes. I will discuss what I did, why I invested, and where I was wrong. I think it's essential to always look back at your investments and your investments' mistakes, because when you analyze the mistakes, it could prevent you from making further mistakes in the future. So this video will also be a guidance for me not to make financial mistakes anymore or not to make that kind at least of financial mistakes. If you have made any financial mistakes in the past, please share them below in the comments. We can only learn from such sharings. This, is, this would be probably the best way to learn. So please share with us in order to enrich our knowledge and hopefully enable us to make less mistakes in the future. As you probably know, I don't make that many investments over a year. If I buy one, two stocks over a year, I'm happy. When I exaggerate, when I start buying three, four stocks in a year, then it usually comes out as a mistake. So let's see what were my two latest mistakes. The first mistake I made, the last one and probably the most recent one, very discussed, very notorious, is Teva Pharmaceuticals. This was Teva's stock price when I analyzed the company in order to see if it was a buy. You can see how I saw, okay, there were two peaks, there was a bottom range, and then again the price was close to its historical bottoms. This gives me, okay, it could be that the stock price will be at its lows. So from a value perspective, fundamental perspective, I thought it was a buy. Of course, I'm not buying on a technical reason ever, but I'll show you my fundamental analysis. Checked the company, the revenue breakdown, the guidance was positive, the Octavis acquisition should bring more revenues and synergies, but that was one point. Revenue geographic diversification, mostly in the US, Europe, rest of world. What the Octavis acquisition brought was a one of the largest generics pipelines in the world, so many more drugs coming online, which should have brought a benefit to Teva. This was also one reason for the acquisition, different geographic footprint, so now it could be synergized by selling all over the world different drugs. Then many thought that Teva paid too much for the acquisition and that's what sent the price down, Teva issued 25 billion of debt, used 8 billion of its own cash and diluted shareholders by 10%. Of course, when Teva's stock price was at 55, 60, now then I can understand that they paid too much. Now that the stock price was 30, I thought, okay, that acquisition is calculated in the price if it was overpaid. Then I looked from a fundamental base, when is the debt due? What is Teva's expected free cash flow and what is the potential that the dividend will be sustained. Here was my first mistake. Teva's cash flow came in at 4 billion for this year, so it won't be 6 billion or 5, 6 billion. So if you put this line lower, you see that there won't be any more dividends, but Teva will probably stay alive as it won't go bankrupt that easily, especially if, as it has low debt repayments, for example, in 2022 or still 2018, 2 billion, 3 billion. So they will be able to cover that. But the dividend is probably gone. The plan was to repay the debt. Of course, the last news destroyed that plan, but still Teva will try to repay with the free cash flow. They are still very free cash flow positive. I even looked at the management's 2009 projections to see how accurate they were in the projections. And in 2009, they were pretty accurate for the next three years. So I thought, okay, management, what they say, they actually do. I was wrong there. Looked again at Teva's estimates for 2015, how much wrong they were, were there, was there a problem, free cash flows, pretty correct, long-term projections, what are they going, how much money are they going to make per share, was again very, very positive. From the fundamentals, I switched to a pharmaceutical market outlook, looked how the healthcare ETF stopped growing suddenly because of the, all the issues with generic pricing. Nevertheless, I saw that the market continues to grow, the demand for pharmaceutics continues to increase, so that was a bonus. What I especially saw is that 
people around the world, and that was unfortunately, so I'm even happy that I lost because I invested in a negative karma stock. People around the world are unfortunately getting more and more sick and they need more medicine. So that's an ugly thing to invest in. So good for you that you lost your money, Sven. On top of the growth in the world, people are aging, more medicine, more medical attention, more whatever, and people want cheaper drugs. And generics are usually much cheaper than the branded counterparts. Generic, the fastest growth in the last 10 years at more than 10% per year and expected to continue to grow that fast. What happens when a, a patent a company has on a drug expires? Well, you can see how fast that brand loses its market share to generics and that's what's happening to Tevas Copaxone when they lose their patent. Nevertheless, I looked, there are many patent expirations there will be more business for Teva. Prescription sales drug growth is also expected to grow. And Teva is the leader in the generic ma market. I even made a table with analysis of Teva compared to Pierce, which is the best pharmaceutical company to be exposed to pharmaceuticals because pharmaceuticals don't fall that much in a recession. Price to cash flow yield was here from Teva and Teva had this dividend of 4% which was very attractive. Debt to equity, again my mistake, 1.05 because the equity was intangibles which they impaired recently. Analyze the dividend, here you can see how was the story for Teva's dividend constantly up, 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 up and up and then stabilized recently. So I thought, okay, so I have a dividend while I wait for the situation in pharmaceuticals to improve. Going back to Teva's guidance, as I saw earnings per share of around $5, giving me a price earnings ratio of seven, cash flows from operations around six billion, free cash flows of six billion, which was very, very attractive. This is now 4 billion and then it completely destroys my invest initial investment thesis. The investment thesis, 80 plus new product opportunities, 30 billion brand value, so really, really positive news for Teva. And they delivered, they really launched lots of drugs in the last few months and year. Again, going back to the recession-proof investment, pharmaceuticals fall much lower than normal stocks. This is the comparison between the US pharmaceutical ETF and the S&P 500 in the two years around the financial crisis. As you probably know, Teva lowered their guidance, missed earnings, impaired 6 billion of assets and the stock price went from 32 down to 25 immediately in the first day. When I see a dividend cut, I sell immediately because I know dividend investors are a little bit slower to digest the news and they will keep selling for a longer period of time. So that move was correct and now the stock price is around 19 as I'm filming this. Am I going back into Teva? No, because I broke one of my rules and that's don't trust intangibles as book value. So practically if I move the intangibles away from Teva, there is no book value. What you can see here is the impairment from $41 per share in book value. Now we are at 24 and free cash flow has significantly decreased in the last quarter. As you can see here, Goodwill is now 40 billion on Teva's balance sheet, almost 50% of assets, was 45 in the previous quarter. So it was 50% of assets was Goodwill, and then on top of it, you have another 21 billion of intangible assets. So as a value investor, I should have known that intangible assets don't give a margin of safety. So that was my mistake. I accept the mistake. I accept the loss. Fortunately, it was my fifth investment, so the loss isn't that material for the portfolio. Nevertheless, it was a mistake and I'll be more careful in the future. All right, for my second investment mistake, we have to go back to 2015. As you know, I don't make lots of investments, so I make even less mistakes. So back in 2015, I invested in Whole Foods market. I checked Whole Foods prices, sales, price earnings ratio and compared everything into a plot. I saw that earnings per share are growing, continuing to grow, but the market reacts very volatile to what's going on. So you can see here a similar pattern that was there with Teva. Price earnings ratio also dropped while the number of stores increased, the 
the 365 Whole Foods shops were getting opened around the state. So there was a lot of positivity. I thought the Whole Foods had a good business model and will continue to grow. Of course, I made the mistake to buy in at a price earnings ratio of above 25, which is again something that a value investor doesn't do. So then of course, the retail conundrum in America, stock price fell from 40 to 28, increased to 33, I sold there, so I take, took, so I took a loss. Why did I sell? Because I bought at the valuation that was too high and Whole Foods simply stopped growing. If we look here, I bought a growth company that then became a no growth company. And earnings per share went from 1.48. I expected those to continue to grow at 10% a year. They're now 1.22 per share. Book value was also down. Operating cash flows were still up. So it's still a positive from a company, but the company's fundamentals weren't in line with what I expected. And I also found better investments in other places. So both my mistakes were, I had money, I didn't know what to do with that money because I didn't want to be overweight in two free stocks. I said, let's buy the fifth stock. Let's buy Whole Foods Market. It's a good investment. Eventually it turned out a good investment. If I would have kept it for two years, I wouldn't have lost anything. I would have made a small 10-ish percent with a dividend, 10-15% profit on the investment, which would be good. However, I sold earlier because I made a mistake in my approach to the company and I think I made my money on other stocks more than 15%. Nevertheless, it was still a mistake. I bought the company expecting growth that didn't come. So I as a value investor bought a growth company and I got burned. Teva, similar situation. I bought a company that I thought had a margin of safety. It still has, it's still an interesting investment, but I think I can find better investments. I just have to keep myself to investing maximum in two free stocks per year and waiting that they evolve. So really invest in the best stocks. I do a lot of research, so I should follow my research and my criteria. Thank you for watching. Share your comments, share your ideas, share your failures. I'm looking forward to your comments and I'll see you in the next video.